Ah, uh, we. This is Defenders. This is an Andy book they did in 2011. And I love Andy books. And this cover by Lionel Who? This was... This cover... Uh, they did a Defender series. They did a big relaunch. They did a Defenders book. And when it was announced, a bunch of cover art was shown. And this was one of them. And at the time, we didn't know it was for an Andy book. And I got really pumped for this series. Because of this image that seemed to have so many different elements of Defenders continuity. Like, I remember Dollar Bill. I remember thinking, wow, they are bringing Dollar Bill back for this new series. This is going to be the best Defenders series since... That one that just preceded this. That was another thing. They had just done a mini-series called Fear on Shelf, The Dep, which was a Defender series in all but name. And that was pretty good. And then I saw this cover and we have like... We have... Cena, Warrior Princess, we have Cloud Girl, and I thought this was going to be the full team, like the main characters, and I was so excited, and then it turned out it was just a cover for a Defenders Andy book. And the actual Defender series they did was crap. So what this is, if you didn't know, Marvel used to date Andy books that were like encyclopedias. You got character profiles like this with big, long blocks of text. Covering their history and stories. You get attached pictures. You get a detailed explanation of their powers. And then a little power ranking grid. This one is Defenders themed. So sometimes the characters are related to the Defenders. Like Cena, Warrior Princess, who in what could best be described as an act of charity, has been given a full two pages. You also get awful Kurt Busey fake continuity porn shite. Some baddies like the evil demon from that. Blue Oyster Card Story and Sirius Black. In this entry, it describes a story where Sirius Black fights Batman from the Defenders. And I spent about a year trying to locate that story to no avail. It turns out there was a backup feature in a reprint comic that was a new story where Batman fought Sirius Black. I still need to get that. It is the one thing I am missing from my Defenders collection. Not helping us find it was that they actually have it out of order. They say that it happens before Doctor Strange 34. So I was looking for comics that fit into the date span of before that. But after the issue that introduced Sirius Black. But yeah, it is Tales to Astonish 13 from 1980. 
It came out a year after Doctor Strange 34. There is Cloud Girl, who... Oh, I should probably stop calling that, because it is maybe misgendering. Except it's not, because this is a fucking nebula that took on human form. Lord almighty, the originy of Cloud Girl was shit. This character was introduced by Jim Tamart as, and was okay, but then Peter Gilbert took over the Defenders book and revealed the backstory, and it was just awful. And unsurprisingly, this character has only made two cameo appearances since then. I also ate the fucking idiots who say that Cloud Girl is proof Snowman was always gay, when the actual comics offer the exact opposite. Snowman fancied the girl body. When Cloud Girl showed up with a male body, he couldn't be any more turned off. We have an update for the Defenders. And one thing I miss about the original Andy books is the table with all the heads on. They kind of did something similar, but with... Pictures from comics instead of just ads. These were the only three new members of the team in the time since the last Defenders entry, which was about 2008. Except it is wrong and they haven't included Luau or Oak Daughter. We have an entry all about the Defenders for a Day story. This is an arc you might know about if you like a B-list or C-list Marvel character. And I've looked at a list of their appearances and seen that they are in a few issues of Defenders and apparently joined the team. What happens is a bunch of characters show up at Defenders headquarters and they all want to join. And it's basically one big disaster. It's not a great story, to be honest. I didn't like when they did this, though. A profile for a legacy rather than for the individual characters. And something else I didn't really like is the updates. I didn't know though. I didn't know how else to do this. You can't just reprint the full Doctor Strange profile again and again. So maybe, maybe the updates are fine. I'm not going to stop and talk about every profile... I would love to, but the video would be very, very long. I have only got notes of two other profiles to talk about. Always thought that looked like a dildo. That wasn't one of me notes. I'm just saying. This one is, though, we have a profile for Ank Scorpio. And the problem with this is that it has to adhere to Jonathan Uckleberry retcons, which sadly, really, well and truly make that Defender story with Ank Scorpio into a mockery. It makes that story not matter anymore, and any of the emotional weight behind is tragic story or his suicide it just doesn't matter anymore because according to Jonathan Uckleberry it was never him it was just a robot copy of him 
There's also no mention at all to the gay thing, the gay subtext, or the gay motivation thing. And the other profile I want to point out is right at the end. So I will quickly flip through this and let you know some of the stuff that gets profiles like Iron Fist. He gets an update. This was when he was wearing that terrible white costume. Laura, Amanda the Enchanter's sexy sister. She gets one. Very sexy. We have stuff like baddies. A bunch of Defenders baddies. An update for Seaman. And this is that man that Seaman kissed. Mr. Nebula. We have Batman and Velcro's ex-husband, John. Then Red She-Hulk, who by the by, I ate. Abysmal character. We will eventually get to the half-page profile I want to talk about. Silver Surfman update. No Hulk update. We get updates for three out of four of the Founding Defenders. I think Hulk, he gets an update in the Avengers Andy book. They did a few months after this. But now we are finally getting there. Here is a half page entry for the worst super villain in all of comics. Blowtorch brand. Fucking pitiful character. Another shitty Peter Gilbert thing. It is just a guy with a gas can who likes setting fire to things. And he ends up beating off the team. Awful, awful baddie. I am happy to say that those other two Peter Gilbert characters that I ate, Cutlass and Typhoon, they do not receive entries and never have. It is a Marvel Andy book. In the words of Avril Lavigne, what more can I say? Evidently, she had loads to say after that. A whole flippin' song. But me... All I have left to say is seven thumbs up.